Joining us now is the author of the report, Rita Walter, of the American Economic Liberties Project. Uh, Reed, thanks for being with us. Now, the idea that big tech can rely on lobbying versus innovation doesn't really feel like that's what we're seeing. A few examples, Facebook moving into the metaverse, Amazon into streaming, Google into commerce. Those are all outside of their core businesses, are they not? That's correct. Sure. Um, the point of this study is more about the broader social and citizen harms of monopoly power. So, as I heard you say at the top, this looks at a number of studies, including pharmaceuticals, oil and gas, and tech, and it finds just on balance that as markets concentrate, those same industry players increase their lobbying in following years. Uh, it also shows the opposite is true that when those industries are less concentrated, when there is more competition, we see less lobbying in Washington by those businesses. So we already know um, that those spending dollars have been increasing for the big monopolists, and we know also from other literature that business lobbying is generally counter to majority will, and dollar for dollar, it's more effective than grassroots lobbying. So in a very real way. Uh, it it tends to threaten democracy and goes to the question of who governs. Is it is it people or is it the biggest companies? Right, but are these lobbying efforts really working? I mean, look at who the administration has taken on to crack down on antitrust. You've got Lena Khan, Tim Wu, Jonathan Cantor. These are all seen as regulators uh, that can be very, very tough on big tech. So what have the company's been spending on for many years if this is going to be the outcome and we know that scrutiny is increasing. Sure, yeah. Um, so to that point, right, there has been a pretty substantial increase in scrutiny by government, but I think that is mostly because uh, very recently people have woken up both in government and in society to these broader set of harms. Um, obviously, we know it harms workers and consumers, um, but it also has these broader social harms. And yes, um, there is some heartening movements that we've seen from the federal government. There are a number of cases, as you mentioned, from the DOJ and FTC. There are a number of state cases, uh, and there are laws being considered at the state and federal level. However, this is just sort of uh, the beginning of the movement against this. For you know, 20, 30 some odd years, there has been substantial lobbying that has entrenched their power in very significant ways. Um, and we're, we're in a moment where people are waking up to those harms, but uh, I, th I think it's critical to seize that moment and double town on making uh, the economy competitive again. Otherwise, we're going to continue to see these harms multiply. But, Reed, to follow up on Deirdre's question, I mean, in your report, you very clearly lay out the correlation between the size of these companies and how much they're spending on lobbying. My question is, is there a correlation between how much they're spending on lobbying and what actually happens on Capitol Hill? Or are those two things disconnected? I mean, we are seeing this bipartisan push to crack down on the tech giants, particularly from an antitrust perspective. Is this spending on lobbying actually having an impact? It's, it's sort of tough to tell because we are in the early stages of a lot of the enforcement and the legislative actions that the government is considering. Um, you can be sure that the biggest tech companies are spending uh, as much energy and resources as they can to dampen that, for sure. Um, but you have seen in the past that there has been a pretty substantial benefit that they've gained from lobbying just in the last several years, right? Um, there are constant reports about how the biggest companies benefit from lax regulations and substantially lower taxes. Uh, so I, I think it's more uh, a point that proves the problem that we're seeing that, yes, the big tech companies are stepping up their lobbying precisely right now as they see a potential threat to their monopoly power. Um, but that is, it's more of a threat than it is something uh, that we should take solace in. Reid, I wonder if in your analysis you've looked at unions up against this effect as well. And I know there's debate about out there whether it's fair to uh, compare union advocacy spending or lobbying uh, with corporate lobbying. But, but unions spend a lot, too, on behalf of, they say, labor and workers. And so is that similarly uh, a concern? Does it counterbalance uh, what companies and what big tech is doing? I think um, there's, there's a substantial amount of other literature about this. And uh, what it tends to show is that, one, lobbying by groups that are not business groups just honestly tends not to be as effective. So uh, even if we were doing sort of a dollar, dollar for dollar comparison between union lobbying and, and big uh, company lobbying, you would see sort of uh, that the power balance that comes out from that is not necessarily enough to stem the tide of these harms. I think what it comes down to is the fact 
uh, that this is, again, it's another call for more substantial regulation, uh, more substantial antitrust scrutiny, because it seems like one of the most effective ways to counter this is not necessarily to sort of speech against speech in this case. It is to deconcentrate the, the economies or, or rather the markets that are generating all of these democratic harms.